I was sent something today, actually, well, it came the other day, but this is actually from Der Bauer, all the way from Der Germany with Der 5090 block. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah. I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II, recreate it with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. If you guys follow Devour's channel at all, then you'll know that he's been working on starting a water cooling uh, component to his business, Thermal Grizzly. And uh, he reached out a couple weeks back and was like, hey, I've actually developed a 5090 Astral Block. Are you can interested in take a look at it? And I said, you know what? Anything to continue the Rip Steve or Rip GN. Dude, we're all the way down to like 77th now from being in like seven. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know what the hell these people are doing to get such good scores, but. This is going to be the next iteration of that. Uh, I'm, spoiler alert, I'm not going to be hooking this up to water and doing any testing on it today. I kind of want to just do sort of like an unboxing first look at this prototype. It's important to note, Jesus. It is important to note that this is a prototype product. It is not representative of the final product. Um, but I, I'm just, I'm ext extremely excited for, for Roman and Devour and the Thermal Grizzly team uh, to see what they've come up with for this. Now they're supporting the Astral card. Um, I say, I, I, I'm assuming probably because their bower has one, to be honest. But it makes sense to take the highest end card and then put a block on it and not take water block money uh, and throw that into a lower end card that would have probably bumped you into the next tier of card if prices made act actual sense. But anyway, I just want to say though that this is, that I'm really excited for this. I love when I see companies that start from super basic stuff like Devour started with Thermal Paste and Thermal Grizzly all the way up to the huge machines and CNC's that he has now and the level of success that he is experiencing over there. So congrats for that. Another fun fact, if you guys were at the, tech ex, uh, the SoCal Tech Fair this weekend, um, you may not know I was actually operating the entire weekend with a hernia. This card is technically above what I'm supposed to be able to pick up right now. So it's going to be very interesting because I'm on very strict doctor's orders after going to the emergency room Saturday night to uh, not pick that stuff up. I honestly think, yep, this box is also over that weight limit. Anyway, here we go. Let's see what we got right here. So I asked him if this was going to be using thermal putty. He said no, they're using thermal pads. There are three different pad thicknesses here, depending on where it goes on the block. He told me they're not pre-cut. He said the reason why they're not pre-cut is because, dang, they're heavy. Phil, feel how heavy these thermal pads are. Jeez. They're like weighty. In fact, I you want to grab the scale just so I can show? Like, yeah. it is significantly heavy. But anyway, um, he said they're not pre-cut, because I always kind of bring that up. Like, why don't brands pre-cut them? He said, because when you put them through the plotter, uh, because the backing is not that sticky, it will peel the backing off. So they have a problem where then the, the backing doesn't stick and then you have a problem with it getting non-sticky anymore. So it is going to be a, you know, cut it to size yourself. The one thing that he did mention is that there are three different sizes for this. Um, and he's like, I'm pretty sure you're competent enough to figure out which size is which. So good luck, <laughs> but they will be marked in the retail sample, if you will. So these are the three different thermal pad sizes that are gonna be for like the VRMs and, and RAM and such. Here is their pressure testing protocol. So it's the Delta Mate is what they're calling it. This is specifically the Astral RTX 5090, uh, dated 42825. They tested it to one bar. Oh, we go way past that in our testing. <laughs> That's at 140 PSI. Oh! Just in thermal pads, and he said there is plenty of excess. So obviously we're not gonna be using all of this, but this is 167 grams the of pads. thermal pads. <laughs> Moving on, uh, what else you get here? You get some tools, obviously. There's, wow, there's one, two, three, four different Allen wrenches. We obviously have some 
Screws and nylon washers, uh, very similar to like something you would see maybe with like EK water blocks when the type of screw that it is. Um, we have, what is this, an instruction for ants? Auf, Auftragen mit Bellengendem Applicator. I'm German, I can make fun of German. Auftragen des Putties via Spatchel. Oh, and then we have a certificate of origin code. Okay, for authenticity. What else we got in here? Wow, we heard you like spatulas. Oh, and then obviously a big tube of Thermal Grizzly. Probably because the die is so big for the GPU. All right, oh, we do get putty. I asked if we were gonna be using putty. He said no, so I guess we'll have to see what that's all about. This is so heavy. Dude, Phil, we thought that the, what was that, the the black Cerakoted one that I just used on the 4090 for Chris's build. Optimus? Yeah, we thought, Optimus? we thought the Optimus blocks were heavy. <laughs> I love the color, it's like a ceramic color. I'm gonna weigh this in a second, but the fact that the tubes are on the end, like obviously you have to account for that length, but this is such a pretty design, like that's not, that's not nickel, that's not copper. I don't know what the, it almost looks like a ceramic coat. It's really cold to the touch, but this almost looks like a ceramic or maybe maybe it's anodized. I'm not sure, no, that, I guess you can anodize. Can you anodize copper and brass? I don't know. All I'm saying is it's beautiful. I can put it that way, um, but it's also very heavy. It weighs on its own six pounds, 2,540 grams. <laughs> That is heavier than most 5090s by themselves at this point. So what else do you get in the box right here? You get gloves. This is a prototype. This is not a retail sample. I'm assuming the packaging would be similar to this. But I need to now look at these instructions for ants to see, to see how to install this thing. Uh, I got a pretty good idea of how it goes considering the fact that it's assembled right now on a mock PCB. In fact, let me take this apart. The instructions for me is gonna be basically just tell me which thickness pad goes where, and I'm gonna to have to use calipers. I mean, you can you can sort of visually look at them and see what the uh, sizes are, but I wanna make sure I get it right, because if I put a thick pad where a thinner pad's supposed to go, then it won't seat properly. That's the biggest mistake people make when installing their own graphics card where you have to use uh, thermal pads that you place, is you put the thicker pad where a thinner pad's supposed to go, and then it doesn't make good contact, and that is usually the problem. So these are Allen keys. Let's try this guy, right? Yeah, yeah so as you can see, wait a minute. These are, these are the thermal pad instructions. That's right. That is the coolest thing I have ever seen. On a, so this is not like, I don't believe this to be just for just for us, I hope this is actually part of the manual because the thing is you can use this to perfectly cut it to size. Dude, and look at the machining quality of this. Jeez. That is like mirror finish. Look at that. This is what happens when enthusiasts design something. I don't know how many people know this. He hasn't really been participating in a few years now. Der Bauer is a former XOC champion, like world record holder, et cetera, et cetera. But he's taken the things he's learned over the years and then tried to use it to create uh, better products to support that type of, of enthusiasm, or enthusi enthusiasm, enthusiastness, He also put like all the credits on the back of that PCB too. Oh yeah, engineers, uh, Mitya, Joe, Roman, Machinist, Marcus, Dirk, Marcus, Oliver, and Lars, production, Cora, Thomas, Alida, Alexander, Florian, Mandy, and Rona. It takes a village. This is also, Okay, so now I don't feel like I even need the instructions, but I do have to tear down the 5090, which is what a lot of people would need the instructions for. I'll be honest, I haven't been like interested or wanting to use a 5090 in a build or my personal build or anything, but this block alone makes me want to. One of the main reasons for that is I don't trust them. You know, the 4090 was bad enough with the whole potential for melting a connector and stuff. The 5090, is potentially even worse, but if I had to choose a card, as much as you guys know, like I'm just still in this kind of a holding pattern on seeing, you know, I, I've had a lot of discussions with ASUS behind the scenes and, and I do think they're working very hard to right wrongs from the past and what I think sometimes is like this massive growing pains for them. But one of the reps that I've always enjoyed working with there and who had the ability to actually invoke change is back there now. So that for me gives me a huge 
um, like I'm, I'm really positive for the future based on that alone. So we'll see. But the other thing is the fact that the Astral card actually has that per pin monitoring when it comes to amps, which is kind of nice so that if something did start to go wrong with the connector, it could at least start to alarm and warn you ahead of time. Now, what they want to point out about this block is this block does use a tempered plexi for the face right here. It is a tempered plexi. Uh, they actually have been trying to use the glass for this, for the idea of, you know, plexi and acrylic can, I think, or is it a tempered acrylic? I think it might be tempered acrylic. I could be wrong. We'll put it on here. I'll make sure it's it's right on screen. But they were just having issues with the, with glass. And you can understand that glass can be a bit, uh, no pun intended, intended temperamental to work with. So that was the initial plan, but right now that is what's on this card. Um, we'll just have to see what actually comes out once it is ready for retail uh, availability. Now he did say that there are changes from where this card is versus where they are now. So I don't know what those changes could possibly be, but I am gonna go ahead and tear down the Astral card and see if I can get it ready for block install. This is probably one of the more involved, if not most involved GPU teardowns I've done in a while. Um, there's a lot going on here, but even the heat sink on the Astral, I know I'm kind of behind the, the curve on this one when it comes to people doing teardowns and stuff, but it is, it is super beefy and heavy. But anyway, uh, it is completely torn down. That is obviously where the instructions are gonna be important for um, the, the, what's the Delta block, right? That they call it? A Delta mate, yeah. So also to point this out, they. I thought that this was maybe just to hold together the block, but no, their Bauer has realized they that the, the Asus card comes with a super ugly, like dark colored chrome, like IO shield. The black one is functional. It is actually intended to replace this one. Although there's this, there's this rectangle right by my finger that's not on the black one, but I don't think it matters. I think it's part of the airflow to be honest, but yeah, so that's kind of neat that we get one of these. It's already pre-attached to the block, so I think we can just slide the PCB in there. So give me a second here to go ahead and just kind of get everything sort of situated with my air-cooled stuff so I can, and I also I also know it's somewhat more involved. I'm not gonna say complicated, but more involved. I was, have, I was taking pictures along the way of what screws went where so I can remember how it all goes back together if and when this thing eventually goes back to air-cooled. So another important tip, take pictures along the way that way you're not like, where did this screw go? And the, and the thing is like, it comes apart in, in a certain sequence. So you have to, you have to like take off these two screws in the back and then there's like two more screws up in the front that, and then you have to take off the IO shield. Then uh, the cover comes off, which then gives you access to some of the downfire screws that are next to the heat sink holding the back plate onto the PCB that then allows you to take the, well, the heat sink actually comes off with just those four and these two in the middle. But then you take off the screws that are going down through the PCB under the heat sink into the back plates to then allow you to take the back plate off. So it's kind of like, it sort of like unfolds itself to come apart. It's crazy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use the diagram of the PCB manual to basically find the one millimeter pads. This is a four millimeter pad apparently right there. This is obviously something they did to also try and keep heat down. I guess I've just discovered the PCB itself gets warm right there because look, where it's having me put a pad directly under the cable, there's nothing there. There's traces that go through there, but there's nothing actually there. There's no component you're heating directly or cooling directly with it. It just sounds like it's trying to sink heat through there to the back plate, or in this instance, to the water block. This is the coolest design ever. The back plate, or, or excuse me, the manual PCB. It even shows you the torque order, right, of the around the GPU. One, two, three, four, right? I like how these have X's on them because they're telling you uh, don't put screws through those because those go through the back plate. And the ones that have circles, you put those screws on because those are the ones that are uh, mounting through the PCB into the block. So it's pretty awesome. And then I, I ended up using the back plate just to put the the thermal pads for the GPU or the back of the memory on there because it sticks better to that than it does to like the SMDs themselves. But you can see we have our thermal pads on the back side of the VRMs. We've got our big cooler pad here for either side of the plug. It's so well thought out. I've done, I, I couldn't even begin to pretend to know how many GPU, GPU blocks I've installed in my life, but I can tell you this is one of the most well thought out experiences for installing a GPU block for anyone. And as you'll notice here, I have the nylon washers between 
the, the screws that go direct into touching the PCB. You want that because obviously you want to be able to protect causing any damage to the PCB, even those big ground pads around the, the holes. Um, and then you don't use nylon washers on the back plate because it already has its own standoff built in. So it's just, this is awesome. Like I, I am, I am very honored to be among the first, and I think if not the first to take a look at this water block, I can't wait to get uh, a little loop set up for this. It's going right to the AC unit, <laughs> to be honest. I'm gonna make a 420 or 360 rad or something hooked up to our AC specifically to cool down the fluid to see what we can do with this card now with water on it. I mean, the air cooler was already so good, but this is gonna have to be better. So there we go, a 5090 Astral with the Delta Mate block from Thermal Grizzly on there. We're gonna throw it on the test bench real quick and make sure that the GPU boots and does all that stuff. I also wanna plug in the RGB to see exactly what is lit. I'm assuming it's probably a perimeter light, but I wanna see. Um, in normal installation though, it's actually fairly industrial and boring looking, to be honest. There's not a lot of like, it's just a black square. Um, but that minimalistic, approach to me is very pleasing. I think some blocks are just gaudy these days, but this is actually pretty awesome looking. I've said it already, the best manual ever. The only thing you actually need a, a real manual for is the teardown of the 5090 Astral or any other graphics card that you're taking apart with its complexity. Uh, I'm assuming that manual exists somewhere. I didn't go looking for it because I know how to tear cards apart, but obviously as a consumer, you should probably go looking for that manual. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, unless they maybe add a little bit more of a design in the back plate or something on the edge or cambered it or chamfered it or something to make it prettier. I don't know what the revisions could possibly be. I mean, we do know that it's a solid copper block. I'm not sh quite sure how he's gotten this color out of it. I don't know what the uh, plating process is. I can tell you it is absolutely a finger magnet though. I, I don't know what his finished process is. This doesn't seem cheap. I have no idea what the price of this block is either. It hasn't been officially announced as like a, uh, with pricing and stuff yet. Oh, there's also one other thing I want to test real quick, given the fact that this is a, uh, a Der Bauer product. I want to see if his um, wire view works or fits. If I click that down, I won't be able to unclick it. So I'm not going to, but you see how the, the cable would interfere with the block right there. So I would need the variant of this one that makes it go this way but I can see right now it would clear. Roman, I need more of these for just cause I just would be cool to see the, the readout like right there. I just have the wrong variant, that's all. I think I have the other one actually at home, to be honest. But even the texture of that like matches his card cause this is metal. All right, let's make sure I didn't brick a $3,700 card. All right, let's make sure we get an image. I didn't plug in the RGB yet. And yes, I can do this. I can boot it without water. So I won't put it under low to be hundred, I'd be fine. I bet you would be idling in the thirties. <laughs> yeah, I didn't murder the card. <laughs> and more importantly, his prototype has all the peaks and valleys where they need to be. <laughs> Nothing felt like it was going crunch as I tightened it down. That's a good thing. Uh, let's take a look at the lighting now and let's see. Eh. <gasps> Whoa, it's got lighting and it's like a, it's like a, I don't want the board light. <laughs> it looks, it's almost like it, it reminds me of like a, dash lighting in like a new car or whatever. It almost makes me wonder if it's a fiber optic in there. Some of these other modes would look like here. Um, wave. Okay, so it's not the brightest of light. It's not very bright, but it's something. So I, I don't think the RGB is a, a major selling point of this block, but it's a, it's a neat, like it has it, right? Like we were saying, if it didn't have it, people were like, oh, the only thing that's missing is lighting but you don't have to turn the lighting on if you don't want the lighting, so. Okay, well, time to get out of here. I can't wait to, um, let's see. Oh yeah, it's wicking heat away <laughs> or sinking heat away because we are sinking and it's time to end this video. <laughs> so guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll put links to Thermal Grizzly down below. Again, this block isn't on the website yet. This is the first real prototype that again is not the final prototype. So I don't know what changes they're making. It's hard for me to imagine what changes they could be making. It seems like a better finished product than a lot of what's already out there on the market. I'll be honest, I'm a little afraid of what the price is gonna be too, because it is manufactured and uh, German designed and sometimes that comes with uh, cha-ching. So we'll just have to wait and see. All right guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.